Hello and welcome to my workshop. My name is Paul. I'm a luthier and bow maker based in Tasmania, Australia. In this series, I will share some of the projects I work on each week, giving you a glimpse over my shoulder as I work as though you were looking through the window into my workshop. Burger, cello bow, and the issue with it is it's coming for a rehair. However, I've noticed I the uh, bow, the, the, the adjuster screw, is quite firm. And on further looking at it, the slight lift under the the nose of the of the frog, and this is caused because this eyelet is neither central in the frog. Um, and it's not lining up square. It's slightly angled that way to be uh, exaggerated. And it's also slightly too far to this side of the, of the frog. So to solve that, I need to remove the eyelet, fill the hole and re-drill and fit the eyelet in the correct position so we'll get on with doing that now so so the thing what is just a holding is it frog it's a boat frog yep I believe that that's eyelet weird. is also that's weird, Daddy. on an angle huh? like that in the frog. It's not, Daddy, it's not shooting that's square. weird because frogs are alive and that's they a go with it, it and it's a, it's a bow frog. It's called a frog. It's not really a frog. No, <laughs> it actually sounds like a real frog. It does sound like a frog, but it's not a frog. That's weird. That's called a frog. It is weird. It is a weird name, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. That was red. And how are you on? So it looks as though this has been done before. It's It's been drilled out and filled in here and also here. And it's, when you look at this, so it's on an angle like that also. It's exaggerated, but um, you can see the hole is far too far to one side, to this side of the of the channel there. So to do it correctly, we'll fit it up in the lathe, and uh, go from there. Okay, so we've lined that up in line with the original uh, position of the original hole and on uh, the same incorrect angle so that we'll drill it out in line with the position of the original the original hole. Um, I'll just check to make sure that that's not going to uh, take too much out of one side or the other um, and we'll, we'll drill that out. Um, and look at what sort of size and how much material we need to remove in order to be able to get enough area around our bushing so that it, the, the repair works.
Okay, so I've trimmed down that bushing and uh, cleaned it up, ready to refit it back into the mill attachment on the lathe and uh, drill it out. And also square. So we just bring it into a point there where we take the frog away and then as you bring it in, it touches both this point down here and this point up here at the same time. And that way you know that relative to these two um, angles where the center line is in the center line. So next step is to make sure we're drilling this as square as possible to the parallel line of the frog. So we're looking for it to be parallel this way or square now, uh, the best way to do that oftentimes this face of the liner isn't square and it's not in this case there's a rock to it so we've got a high point where our eyelid is going to be um, so if you set it square to this front half of the frog, um, it's the it's it's going to be on a, on a forward angle. If you set it square to the back half of the frog, it's going to be on a leaning back. Um, so it needs to be square to the rock, um, and that's the easiest, the best way to do that that I've found is to set up your drill in reverse in the lathe. Come into the high point so that you're just off touching. Hopefully my head's not in that shot. And then as you wind the cross axis on the lathe away, you monitor the distance that the the, the distance of gap between the end of your drill and the and the line and plate on the frog and then you wind it back into the high spot in this case it pulls away approximately a millimeter and then you wind it back towards the heel end of the frog and you look for a similar gap um, distance that's the most accurate way that i've found of of getting it i've found that to the eye you can actually get very very accurate results just by um, lining it up by eye and judging that distance by eye um, rather than trying to get a micrometer um, measurement on it um, and that gets you square to the to the rock on the frog um, in some cases you may want to set it square to the either the front or uh, the front half of the frog so that the, the nose of the frog is, is seated down nicely um, when it is lined up However, in most cases, my default mode is to, to set it up square and true to the, to the rock point of the frog um, and then uh, adjust it from there if necessary, if I need to rebush it and redrill it again uh, and, and set it differently. Um, on a very rare occasion, you may have to do that. But um, at this point, um, I've got that now set... Um, so that we are square and true this way, this way, and on that facet. So there's three dimensions that, the, that it needs to be lined up square. Um, and we're really ready to drill. Start with a uh, one millimeter pilot. Um, and then start to come in with our one eighth uh, of an inch drill, which is the drill this is a thick shank eyelet in this frog um, normally i would start with a thin shank but this frog has already got an eyelet with it that's that's working well so and that's a thick shank eyelet and the pilot for that thread will be a uh, a, a, th a a one eighth drill um, will be the final final drill hole size size so i'll start with the pilot and then drill the final
Okay, so you want the uh, drill to be protruding as little as possible to prevent it wandering. <sighs> a little tap and then we'll have a look at it and see how it looks and then we'll continue Okay, so I now have a eyelet which I've pre-prepared uh, the same thread and size, but I've pre-prepared it as a thread cutter. Um, it's got a it's got a, a, an angle cut into the base of it to to set it up as a as a thread cutter. As when we're cutting any threads, we want to go in, back, and then in again. Time to clear the swarf. You notice at no point do we use the adjuster through the hole to turn it. A couple of reasons. It damages the edge of the, or you risk damaging the edge of the liner with the through screw threads. The other reason is you risk damaging the thread, internal threads on the eyelet. Maybe being very uh, cautious. And... Okay. 
all about good practice. Now that we've cut our internal threads, we can fit the uh, original eyelet. We'll see how that runs. To the depth of how, how far that's, that's running. That now winds in. And runs smoothly and easily. Doesn't have the, it had a slightly oscillating wobble to it previously. Had a tight spot and a loose spot. It's now even. One test of that is to wind the adjuster out part way and then press it in and feel how how much pressure it takes to wind it in each time. And that's right up to the to the nose. Um, however, there's now no gap under the nose. Um, the back is the back. The the fit of the back is not is not perfect, but it never was. Um, and the, the the octagonal doesn't mat, quite match the stick. Absolutely spot on. There's some wear there. Um, we also know that that liner had a had a had a lump in the middle. Um, now that's dropping into the the mortise where the 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 eyelet runs, so it is it is taken up in that area, um, and that's how we're able to get quite a reasonable fit at front and back on the stick. It also matches the stick, uh, but the main thing is that that is now running smoothly um, without any. It's it was really quite firm previously. They also had a a, a bow buddy type. Uh, um, rubber grip over the nose and that may have been masking some of the firmness of that of that movement but it's now smooth um runs true parallel and that eyelet is obviously now fitted correctly um and in terms of time um time taken on on a process like that that has to be done extremely you know it's, it's a very accurate job um and there's some two hours that i've just put into bushing and refitting that eyelet um so while fitting an eyelet may seem to be a relatively straightforward um and uh, easy job for your local luthier or bow maker um there's actually quite a bit to doing it and to doing it correctly um and if it's not done done correctly you can cause damage and and have a bow that doesn't play play very well um, there's all sorts of damage you can you can do to the liner, to the sides, um, and to the internals of a bow um, if that eyelet isn't fitted uh, correctly. So that's the process that I follow. Um, and uh, you know, nine times out of ten, I get it uh, get it right. Um, and if it's not right, then I'll fix it, make sure it's right before it goes out.